and then feel all the time that you know you try to create an elastic connection on both reins. So the neck at the moment we're not going to worry as to where the neck is. What we want to think is that the nose is going slightly forward and out so you don't pull him towards you to get the contact. What you want is to actually do little exercises like this as you're doing now slightly push your hand a little bit more forward and encourage him to then from your leg and your seat sort of come to the contact to, to the contact but it's important that when you start you know you just have a, a plan and you have a, a, a very clear concept of what am I going to do um, keep big lines don't go too much into the corners Again, this way, a bit more outside rain when you actually go through the corner. So you hold the outside um, shoulder and actually turn his outside shoulder more. You see there, he's actually falling to your left, yeah? And then the quarters are sort of going out as well. So keep turning, do another circle. Think almost a little um, quarters in and push your right hand forward. You want to, you know, you want to turn him from your outside rein. So now you need to have your right leg so that you actually keep him on the outside. Okay, because at the moment when you turn him, clearly you use your inside hand to make him turn. So you want to actually turn him from your outside leg and outside rein. And then if you feel him falling in, then, you know, you, you have your right leg on. Gosh, I'm completely confusing you both now. It does. Okay. So just, you know, stay on the slightly bigger, uh, bigger um, circle. It doesn't have to be, you know, too small. But just feel that that's it. That's better. Yeah, and just take your time. And just ride him like that. Okay. And a little bit more outside leg. The quarters are stepping ever so slightly out. So, you know, you put, yeah, fraction. Just, and keep the walk always the same. There, the moment you put your outside leg on, you know, he tried to put the quarters in, but then he stopped as well. That's it, there. Like it is now. Yeah, and just keep, and try to keep thinking of that walk remaining all the time the same. Keep the connection on your outside rein. Yes, that's better. Okay, ultimately we'll need, you know, as we progress he'll need to be a bit more around your inside leg but I think for the time being it's important to have him straight and coming to the connection which at the moment it looks better right change the rein doing exactly the same and don't alter your feeling just keep that connection outside rein keep the shoulders to your left Yeah, and turn him from your left, uh, right rein and right leg. Yeah, don't make him fall in. Just imagine the line on the floor, yeah? You don't have to go sideways. Just imagine the line that you're on, but turn him from the outside rein, outside aid, and not from the inside hand, which is what you were doing at the beginning. And as you actually pull on the inside rein to make him turn, you automatically push him onto the outside shoulder, right? That's why you almost want to slightly feel that your neck rein, but the shoulders always come first. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit stiffer this way, isn't it? Okay, so just keep it, keep it easy. Don't sort of complicate it. Just keep him walking. Just feel the connection. And if anything, just go back to the right. Do a little bit more on the right, and then you come back to the left just so that he understands what you're after. Yeah, that's better. You see, and then now it's just, I mean, it's obviously it's fragile, but it looks like he's start to come onto the bit, yeah? So you can actually just give him an ever so slight um, right um, flexion just a little bit by playing a little bit more with your fingers but don't actually as you do that make sure that he actually is not going to fall to your left
Yeah, so that's the sort of idea you want to have before you actually start bombing around. So that you actually, it's just so that, you know, you start creating the connection with him. And, you know, what you can do is you also start putting the odd halt into it. So you halt, keep him, you know, in a nice frame and then sort of forward again. Yeah, and not with your voice, with your legs. Yes, I did. <laughs> you wanted the microphone, I can hear you. And again. Good, and forward. You know, and, it, and it's just a matter of when you start to do lots of little things like that, just to create the connection between the two of you, so that as you get on, you, you know, you say, hey, I'm here and I'm communicating with you and, you know, we are going to work together. And then when you, you know, you're at the point where you are now, you know, let's just start trotting and see what happens. But don't go too fast. Remember, the faster you go, the more likely he is to go out of balance and actually drop behind the, the contact. Okay, so try to ride him now on big lines in exactly the same way as you did in the walk. So there he's ever so slightly onto the outside shoulder. So you just want to put your hand a little bit more against his withers. A little bit more support with your, left, uh, your right rein and right leg. That's it. And for now, don't, do not worry too much about where the neck goes. We'll worry about that later. Okay, so when you do a loop like that as well, just design it a little bit better. It started quite well and then you do a kink back to the track, which effectively sort of unbalances him. So keep your line very smooth. And now start turning back. That's it, a little bit more right leg because actually he's very good when you go away from the track once you start coming back he's falling back to the right yes so keep the connection on both reins that sort of speed is absolutely fine you really don't need to go any faster than that and then again start in incorporating some walk transitions <laughs> so, in the in uh, try to keep the feel more forward when you go into walk. Yeah, when you actually got to walk, it just like dropped. So if he does that, just straight away, okay, and go. Just feel that it's absolutely smooth and seamless as you go down to walk. So that's just half hold, half hold, and yeah, better, and trot. And actually, it's just by rep repeating the exercise time and time again that then your forward transition, uh, the downward transition will remain more forward because he'll know that and trot. Yeah, don't let him walk for too long. Unless he's tense and not accepting the walk, just go straight back into trot. And again, just take your time and yes, and trot. Much better. And you feel the difference already when you actually go into your walk? Yeah. So, again, you know, instead of giving him a huge kick or something or allowing him to just go down, yes, better. Just keep your legs on and repeat the exercise. Maybe make sure when you go to walk that you actually first think about your position because you know, you're rising, your shoulders are a fraction forward and before you actually do the walk transition, maybe sit a couple of strides, put your shoulders back to help him have, uh, keep his own balance, yeah? Or otherwise, if you want to stay rising because you find it easier, make sure that you don't tip forward and you actually sort of use more, yes, better, you use more your body weight to stop him and not your hands. 
So a couple of times when actually he does lose his balance in the uh, into walk and he actually blocks is because you use too much hand. That's better. And as you're doing it now, you can change direction, do the same. But it's important that you keep repeating it. Keep a little bit more leg again. The transition down there was just too abrupt, yeah? Don't go too fast in trot. Take your time, take your time, take your time. And think forward into wall. Yeah. Okay. And again, a little bit more outside rain. A little bit more outside rain against the neck. Don't go any faster. Take your time. Yes, better. Okay, so I, I would do loads and loads of this, but you need to make yourself violent so that when things go wrong, you know, you repeat it. You can't just be happy and just try to be really soft with your hand. Good. When you actually go into walk. And then, you know, the next step will be to do exactly the same with your canter and trot. And it's from these sort of really basic exercises incorporated with circles that you will start getting, creating a, um, a better connection and, and him working more from behind. But make sure that you take your time in the trot and the same when you actually go into canter. That's looking better. Yes. You know, and, and the thing is, you know, if you, if you don't think about the connection from the start, he will not be able to start using his back. So y your warm-up has to be very much composed of that sort of things. And, you know, by all accounts, you know, use a bit more circles and, and things like that. You don't always have to go on the straight lines. But just have that feel that, you know, as you, you basically slow your rising a little bit, Hold him with your fork of your legs so that you actually slow him down with that and not with, with your legs, uh, with your hands, sorry. Yep, there, the, need a bit more leg, yeah? And now he's starting to take a contact forward. His nose is ahead of the vertical, so that's really good. So go with him. Keep really soft and elastic with your with your arm. And do the transition in different places. Don't do them always at sea and you know places where he'll expect them. Yeah, again a little bit too much hand. So just think of slow, ever so slightly slow the trot and smooth into walk. Yes, better. You start getting the feel for it? Yes. Yeah, does it make sense? Yes. Yeah. So that's something that, you know, it, it, it's obviously it's sometimes easier to have somebody on the ground, but hopefully, you know, you can feel when he actually, how smooth the transition is. And don't actually, if something goes wrong, just don't make a huge um, alteration to your aids when you do it again. Make sure that you know you're still there with your leg, you're still supporting him, but your hands at the moment are just starting to pull back a little bit. Go with the flow. If he wants he knows he wants to go out, just ever so slightly allow him to go. Yes, getting there. That's good. Okay, so the other thing I've noticed as well is when you change direction, you, he then gains speed, right? It's, you know, don't worry, it's fine. But you just need to, to think about having the consistency. The moment the speed alters, you know, whether he drops behind your leg or the, whether like this time when you went from right to left, he accelerates, you know, he gets away from you. So you need to just be that little bit quicker 
to just think, oh, okay, when I change direction, he will go faster. So do a little half hold so you can keep him in that pace, so that you, you know, in that tempo, so that actually, you know, you can keep the connection as you want it to be as well. Do that one again. You were about to say it wasn't good and it wasn't good. So if it's not good, just go back to walk and repeat. Yes. Yes, it's getting there. But it's also because, you know, you, you have a steadier tempo, you've got him into some, uh, a sort of rhythm that he can actually start to, to relax. And because you're actually doing simple exercises with a very clear purpose in your mind, you're actually building blocks towards, you know, where you want to, him to be for a test. The way you started, he, he just can't understand what you want. And therefore he cannot actually, you know, best with the best in the world, get the connection and, and the balance and everything else that you'd want for a test. Because you ask so many things in, in one go. So you need to keep it very simple and very clear for the both of you. So why don't you just go on a circle somewhere, a large circle, and just um, go into canter and have the same kind of feel, you know, ride the, the connection in the same way and do some um, canter and trot transition because that's also a very good way for you to check what's going on. So go whichever side is easier to, you know, whether it's right or left, whichever way you feel is the easiest and then start on the one that, that goes best. So again, just prepare your transition into canter. Play with the fingers on the reins so you can keep him where you want him to be. Go on the circle and then... <laughs> you can keep the whip on the outside, it matter. <laughs> Okay, so there he's crooked. There he's actually falling on, the shoulder's falling out, the quarters are coming in, so make sure he's straight before you actually do anything else. Yeah, it's not so much pushing the quarters in, it's actually turning the shoulders more. That's it, yes. Good. Now sit in the saddle, a fraction more forward, try to have him a little bit rounder if possible so that he's actually using his back a little more. There he's actually onto the outside shoulder. Right, he's got too much neck bend, so keep him straighter. And just ride him a fraction more forward in the canter, not faster, that's it. So that he actually gives. And just keep the rein, the outside rein, keep him again a little straighter, at time almost a little counter flexion. That's it. Yep. Yep. And you just keep asking, keep him straight until he actually sort of agrees and gives you, uh, gives you what you want. There. There. Exactly. Good. And so now I'm just going to do a prepare transition for trot. Whoops. Is that not what you talked about from the <laughs> Well, yes, but it was actually on his turn, not yours. <laughs> okay, but the trot is better. Make sure you don't let him go too fast just because you've cantered. Make sure you go back to the tempo that is actually suiting him, where you have control and where you have a nice connection, yeah? Okay, now into canter. Keep him absolutely straight. Just a fraction more forward the canter. I think the walk and the trot, you need to go slower. The canter, you can just allow him a little more forward. Otherwise, what he does is he comes up and starts rocking and being a little hollow. That's it. Good. Okay, now keep your legs on. Don't let him get into trot just because you say good boy. 
Okay, but do you, do you know where I'm coming from yes, and what, I, I, what saw, I wanted to yes. do? Yes, but as soon as I think, oh, good boy, he goes, ah, yes, correct. Stop. Exactly. So you say, good boy, and then you say, well, that's it, I've done enough. Okay. Okay, steady the walk. Don't go too fast. Focus on your outside rein. Sit a little bit deeper in the saddle. You're always ever so slightly going forward with your upper body and therefore you don't sit really on your sit bones. I think I'm supposed to different place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty convinced they are. Are you? Okay. Are they? Oh, right. Oh. <laughs> so, yes, wherever your seat bones are, sit on them, but just try to feel that you actually have more horse in front of you than, you know, at the moment because you, your upper body goes a little bit forward, then your hands automatically go a little bit against him as well. So try to think, you know, you've got your neck strap, think of the, the hands being sort of closer of the neck strap than the saddle. Okay. Ultimately, we'll just need a little more connection into the canter. The stride itself was not too bad. Keep your legs on. Again, hands forward and ride him just a fraction forward. Keep playing with the contact. Outside rein, he's still sort of drifting onto that right shoulder. And as long as he's not straight, he won't be able to take a contact properly. You know, you've noticed that in the walk and in the trot. That's it, yes, yes, it's coming, that's better, good, and then, like this, go into trot. Yes, yes. get it! It's getting there, yes, that was the right idea. Again, steady with the trot. Make sure he doesn't run away from you. And then again, a transition into canter. Better, outside rain. Look, you start there and then, you know, you drift completely sort of to the left. So you need to visualize the lines that you're on, where you're going and sticking to those lines. You now imagine the circle line and that's where you need to be. Outside rain, turn, turn, that's it. Yes, and now again the transition. Yes, better. Do it the other way. Steady, you're going too fast. You're going too fast, it's out of balance. Little half hold, take your time in trot. Keep your legs on doesn't mean you just completely sort of stall, but you just get that tempo in the right way. Good. Much better this way. Okay. Just go back to trot and do that transition again. I think this way you can just think ever so slightly uh, right flexion, but it's small. You put his head probably about an inch or two to the right as you go into canter better in order to keep him round. Whoops. Your reins are getting rather long, your hands are on your thighs and therefore you can't really have much control of what was happening. Yeah? So shorten your reins, hands more forward and ride to the contact. There. Keep turning those shoulders. Sit up and turn the shoulders to the right. There. There. Okay. Keep going. Keep turning him. Oops. Keep the connection. When he actually fights you or argues, just hold the contact and just keep riding him as if there was absolutely no other problem. There, good. And like this, go to trot. Yes. Okay, give him a break. 
Did you feel on that transition how much smoother it was than actually from the other way? 